Now, to describe a motion of a particle, usually we use position vector, velocity vector, and acceleration vector. Usually, we use R to represent a position vector, which the starting point is always the origin. Now, to find the velocity vector, what we need to do is just to differentiate the position vector. And then to find the acceleration vector, well, we will just differentiate the v, which is this one. We differentiate the v, or in other words, we find the second derivative of the position vector. Besides velocity and acceleration, we also want to know about the speed. Well, the speed, it is always the magnitude of the velocity, okay? So we'll find the magnitude of the velocity vector. And then when we talk about direction, we will find it from the v over the magnitude of v. Okay, for example, let's say if we want to find the velocity, speed, and acceleration of a particle at t equals to 7 pi over 4, whose motion in space is given by the position vector rt equals to 2 cos t, 2 sine t, 5 cos squared t. Then what we need to do, we just start by looking for the velocity by differentiating the rt. So our v, we will have negative 2 sine t, which we get it from differentiating 2 cos t. And then the j component will get 2 cos t by differentiating 2 sine t. And then for the k component, we just need to apply the chain rule, and we get negative 10 cos t sine t. And for this part, we need to do a little bit of a justification so-called, because if we don't uh, simplify it, we are going to uh, have longer steps to find the differentiation for acceleration later. So what I have done here is to change this negative 10 cos t sine t to become negative 5 sine 2 t by using this double angle formula. Then later when we want to differentiate this function, we, what we need to do is just to use the chain rule. Okay, we'll proceed to at. We'll look for the speed later after we substitute the t with 7 pi over 4. But before we substitute the t with 7 pi over 4, let's continue to look for the acceleration first. Okay, as we can see from here, the i component for a will be negative 2 cos t by differentiating negative 2 sine t. And then the j component for a will be negative 2 sine t by differentiating 2 cos t. And lastly, the k component, we get it negative 10 cos 2t by differentiating negative 5 sine 2t using the chain rule. So after we get these two, what we need to do is just to substitute the t with 7 pi over 4 and then to find the speed at the same time. Well, let's see. When t is equal to 7 pi over 4, sine t is equal to negative square root of 2 over 2 because 7 pi over 4 is at the fourth quadrant. So negative 2 multiplied with square root of 2 over, uh, sorry, negative square root of 2 over 2, we get square root of 2. Whereas here, cos 7 pi over 4 will give us square root of 2 over 2, and we simplify it, we get square root of 2. And this one, Sine two, sine two t. What do we get? We will get sine two multiplied with seven pi over four. That will give us sine seven pi over two, and this will give us negative one. So negative five by negative one, we get five. And after we get the vector, this velocity vector at this particular time, then we look for its magnitude which is square root of 2 plus 2 plus 25, the square for each of the components, and we get square root of 29. This one will be much easier compared to looking for the magnitude from here. Okay, lastly, we look for the acceleration at t equals to 7 pi over 4. We substitute t equals to 7 to pi over 4 into each of them, and we get negative square root of 2, square root of 2, and zero.